Past paper questions. The first one here, define the term algorithm. Other than pseudocode, state one method of expressing an algorithm. Well, first of all, an algorithm is a set of instructions to solve a problem. Unambiguous is a key word that we want to put in there. It shouldn't be confusing to the computer what you meant by any of your instructions. And one other way of expressing an algorithm other than pseudocode is a flowchart. Of course, you could have said structured English, but it's not technically something that we've looked at. Part B, describe the main characteristics of a recursive algorithm, only for two marks. Well, a recursive algorithm is one which calls itself and with a parameter which changes, so something needs to change. It can't just call itself forever without changing any values in it. And it must have a terminating condition or base case, uh, which stops the calls. And of course, you remember this allows it then to pop back up the stack and calculate the original value. Part C, describe two disadvantage of using a recursive algorithm. Well, first of all, memory overheads. We're using multiple stacks and recursive procedural calls, which means that there's gonna be a lot of memory required. It's difficult to program also, it's difficult to dry run, it's difficult to debug if there's a fault. We could end up with a stack overflow in that the amount of things needed in the stack has exceeded the amount of memory available to it. We could end up with an infinite loop because there may not be a base case. And I remember programming an algorithm like this in, in university uh, where it wasn't clear based on the question whether there was a base case. And the complexity of the exercise we were doing meant that the program had to execute for a couple of hours before deciding whether it was complete or not. Um, and I remember writing a program that spent that I that I left running for about three days before it managed to find a base case to end its processing. So these things can take a long time. Question six here: There's an algorithm. Let's dry run it. Well, if we start off with that first iteration, with the decimal number is 137. Uh, mod 2 is 1, the bin of it is 1, and the answer is 1. 68 then is 0, 0, and the answer becomes 0, 1, because we're concatenating there. 34 is 0, 0, and our concatenated answer is 0, 0, 1. Notice we're concatenating at the start of it. Then we've got 17, which gives us a 1 and a 1, so we end up with 1, 0, 0, 1, and hopefully now you're starting to see what's actually happening. 8 becomes 0 and 0, so we've got 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Then 4, 0, 0 and we end up with 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Then two, which is zero, zero again. So we've got zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one. And then we've got one, which is one and one. So we've got one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one. Now that's an eight bit number, isn't it? It's ones and zeros. So hopefully you can work out what it's meant to do now. Uh, because the point of the algorithm then is that it converts decimal or denary numbers to binary numbers. Part C, explain the selection of data types for bin and answer in the algorithm. Well, bin is an integer, um, despite it being one or zero, because the values are to be used to form a binary number. All right, makes sense. And then the answer is a string to represent the bit pattern. So that means the ones and zeros have to be in very particular places. We can't let that become something mathematical that could be automatically changed by the processor. Each time the loop's executed, the result of the mod calculation is placed at the beginning of the output string. So we're going from least significant to most significant digit. Question nine there, another big algorithm. Part A, evaluate the efficiency of the search B algorithm and using big O notation, determine the growth rate for the time performance. So each iteration in the loop halves the number of elements until you get one left, okay? For N values then, we halve the number until we get one value left, which is uh, log two N. If there are two instructions in the loop then, it's two log N. So log n dominates, therefore the time performance is big O log n. Draw a graph where you're just drawing your logarithmic performance against linear. And the way the marks are offered to you is you have a mark for the correct axes, so make sure you label your axes, a mark for the correct O n, and the mark for the correct O log n. And then just another mark for the correct graph. Part C, state which algorithm is more efficient when searching for data algorithms. So then it's your knowledge of big O that you need to test here. And O log N is definitely the more efficient one than a linear one. 